Uh, my restoration series for the 337. Uh, when we left off, I was going to check up on the uh, service manual on the best way to get the motor out, and I did that. But before we get started, I, I have a confession to make, and that is that I, I didn't follow my own procedures and device when I read the part about this uh, cam stack removal. When I went back to look at the motor, I reread that part, and it turns out I had read the part of removing this for the Model 338, which is the other machine that's covered in the service manual. And the difference between this 337 and 338 is that this is straight stitch and zigzag only, and the 338 has removable cams that uh, you can exchange by pulling in and out to do other decorative stitches. But since the 337 model is a little more basic, I guess, the cam's permanently installed and uh, you're, you, you don't take it out like that. So that explains why, despite my best efforts, I, I couldn't get anything to budge here. Because it's not supposed to. So, lesson learned. Um, when I took another look at this to remove the model, I, I really wanted to get the light um, holder uh, out of here. I, my goal was to remove all the electrical parts so I could do my cleaning method. Uh, Otherwise, plan B is you have to wrap them up very good in, in plastic and zip locks and uh, zip tie them and so forth to keep moisture out of all those parts. But then I remembered having a similar problem with a Model 603. And uh, what I did was I, I took a look at the light fixture and I remembered that by removing these two screws that hold the uh, mounting bracket and spring to the plastic covering you could disassemble it like this and you can get down to just the wire and the soldered on contact, contacts that the uh, light bulb contacts so now it's real skinny and I just pass the cord out and around the uh, stitch lever length lever post and uh, I've got it here and before I take the motor out I'm just going to take a look at the wiring and the uh, so forth. Here it is right here and I and I feel I can just pass that out. So I'm, I was really pleased to do that. Now I don't have to try and seal this all up. The, the plug, um, the switch, the light holder, and I can just continue on now with uh, removing the motor. So in the manual you, you you pass through here and there's uh, uh, some washers and a bolt and everything that allow you to attach the motor to it and I think I showed you before with the belt it's concentric so you can turn it back and forth to uh, raise and lower the motor to make the belt tight and I always uh, oh and the other part is you loosen this uh, set screw which allows this nylon plastic post to be pulled up and that's what anchors the top part of the motor and uh, I always lay the machine on its side to do this because it just gives me a better view from the bottom of, of what I'm doing instead of trying to you know look in here and and uh, see where my screwdriver's going and how to disconnect all that 
So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, they suggest in the manual to loosen this set screw first and slide this post up out of the way to, whoop, to free the top of the motor. So we'll do that. I'm just going to put this set screw back in for now because I, I have a tendency to lose those. So let me uh, turn this thing on the side here. Well, first I think I'm going to take my other parts bag and put the housing and the bracket and the screws for that uh, light fixture in there and see my post fell through here so I'm gonna I'm gonna grab that post and I'm gonna put that in there and uh, seal that up I'll leave it out here because I'm eventually gonna put the uh, concentric washers and the bolt for the bottom of the motor in there so let me see if I could get this position where we both could see it from the bottom here. This is what we're talking about uh, removing. Let's see if I can see that better this way. Yeah. So, uh, the black piece that you see here is a bracket coming from the bottom side of the motor. And these washers all go, you know, around it and the concentric so it can be adjusted. But that's what anchors the bottom of the motor and also allows you to adjust the belt tension. So if you're new to this, this would be a good time to start taking pictures um, of, of, of what's here and of pictures as you go along. So you remember which washer goes where and... It's kind of two pieces of metal, so what goes where. So you, you pick one of the holes from the end of the unit here, and you would just go in there, and you would just totally take this out from the uh, body of the machine. So you've got your uh, concentric bolt, our concentric washer with the mounting bolt you have uh, what's called the round spacer washer uh, between the two pieces of metal so after taking out that top nylon post and this the motor should be free to come out I just store that and get it out of the way here and uh, Turn this back around so you can try and see it a little bit better here. And uh, I don't know if my headlamp will show you any more, but that's that's what you've got now with the motor just laying there and the the plug. So we're going to try and gently uh, pull this out seems before that I had to kind of jockey the motor around in here to get it to to come out because of that longer bracket so you just want to you just want to be be careful and take your time here and uh, there we go so this is what the internal motor looks like. And I had this same setup on the 337, 347, uh, 413 I did, um, uh, 457 that I did. There's the brushes in here, the commutator on the motor, which, which I'll clean up the carbon black of off of. What's nice about having this all out is I can I can take uh, a rag or a Q-tip and use that uh, crud cutter 
to uh, wipe down all of these parts. And then I've got the whole electrical assembly here. I can polish the contacts, polish the commutators, clean everything up, and then take my own meter and test for continuity and, and shorts and uh, weak connections. So I'm really, really happy that I was able to get all of this out. So I'm going to put this in a bigger Ziploc bag just to uh, to keep it protected uh, for now. And get some of my other parts bags out of here. And we're down to the a lot of the loose parts off from here. This is the Bob and Winder tension spring. And uh, if I wanted to, I could flip this over. There's a screw in there. I could take it off if it was uh, in bad shape to take it off to polish it and clean it. But this one's good. I, I'm not going to take the time to do that. This gives me huge access for cleaning uh, to the inside of the machine here. And, you know, you can, you can clean up the outside and the parts you get to, but when you have a machine like this that um, has a strong tobacco smell and a real musty smell, all that stuff is still going to be in there. You know, it's like lipstick on a pig. You make it, everything you can see looks good, but the, the parts you can't see, uh, not so much. So I, I really like uh, doing this, and I'm happy that I was able to figure out a way to get all the electrical out. Uh, part of it in the manual talked about taking the motor out by cutting the wire, and then you have to strip it and make new connections, which sometimes cannot be avoided. But I don't like to do that unless the existing connection is faulty. Because uh, I, I know every connection is a resistance point and um, a potential fault point. So I took that out. I can test it with my own meter. If a connection is bad, I'll go ahead and, and remake it, of, of course. But if it's not bad and test 100% okay, I'd rather leave it. Now, I've had uh, machines that were so bad that I did have to take off the bobbin positioning bracket and a couple of them I've even had to remove the hook because they were uh, damaged. But again, this machine's, this machine's not, not too bad. Um, this post, it's got a spring in there and it's got a uh, kind of a, what I call a pressure uh, Mm, connector on the, I don't know what you would, I don't know what that's called. It's, it's kind of like a wire clip. And I think I am going to take that off and uh, pull those parts out so that I can clean them. A lot of time that post and spring are just pretty, pretty grungy and, you know, they get uh, oil film and then they collect dust and you saw before that when I opened it, I had to use the uh, like a screwdriver to break it free. That's usually a sign that the wrong type of oil has been used and it's dried and sticky and has varnished stuff up in there. So this this is pretty easy. I think I can grab needle nose and just pull pull that off, and uh, that way I can clean out the tube and and clean the mechanism itself. And uh, remembering that everything I take off, I, I got to put back on, but I think this will be worth it. So let's see if I can just grab this. They probably make a special tool, but I think if I just pull it, there we go. So that's the little wire retention clip, I guess I'll call it. And the spring, which, which I'll test, still seems pretty good. And I'll push this through to the top and see if I can't uh, pull it out. 
So there it is. Uh, it's got some varnishing and stuff on there. I, I've, I've definitely seen a lot worse. But I'll be, I'll be happy to uh, clean this off with the crud cutter. Polish it with metal polish or my Dremel if I, if I need to. Uh, look, looking close, I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure if that's rush or rust or varnishing from the oil on a couple of spots. But a lot of times the tube it goes in or the space will, is at least this bad and sometimes worse. So I'll be happy to have that open and, and clean it all out. So there's a couple more small, small parts that I'll bag up. Um, let me look at anything else in here. I have really good access now to use the, uh, the crud cutter. Let me turn the wheel a little bit here. Yeah, it's really, everything's stiff and sticky and and dry you know a lot of people would just pump some more oil on here and put some grease onto the uh, steel gears at the top and they would call it like all cleaned up but I just can't I just can't uh, that's not my method so uh, the other thing I guess I'm going to want to do is remove these feet out of here. And these were so dry that they did not twist out. They, they crumbled. So I'm wondering if I can uh, put a screwdriver in here and kind of dig them out. Make it pry them out. Chip them out. <laughs> These are these are uh, some of the worst that I've I've seen in here. Let's see what else could I use to dig those out. Yeah, these are these are in there pretty pretty good. Usually the part way inside there isn't as dry as this part outside. <sighs> yeah, these are pretty. There we go. There. So this this part it's still you know it's still hard but it's not as brittle as the end that was sticking out in the air all the time. So this I can this I can clean up real good and go in there with my little dental poxa brush and wipe it out, get some crud cleaner in there. Um, let's see if we can let's see while we're here I can take another one of these off maybe so if you see uh, some of the other videos I did like the 457 I, I don't know what the why but the these uh, screws down here were all uh, rusted and had stuff built up on them and I, I don't know how they they must have uh, sat near some, I don't know, by a water heater or some, they must have been exposed to moisture someplace, sitting in somebody's uh, garage or, or storeroom and not covered. But these screws are not uh, too bad. They'll clean up real nice. They're already loose. Let's see if these will break back and forth a little and come come free there this came this one came off a lot better yay so I'm gonna come back up here and I I guess even though it's pretty clean I guess for the heck of it I will go ahead and take off the bobbin winder if I, maybe I can get this to where you can if I can get to where you can see it better uh, eh, okay but uh, uh, oh, yeah I'm afraid of that okay I'll just do it there I think hopefully you can see that 
and this usually just uh, lefty loose see and there's usually two or more washers and sometimes one will stick on the bottom of the machine or up on the underneath of the bracket and then when you move it around you loosen it so the 457 had four washers and they had to be arranged in a certain way according to the manual for this one the service manual it said there's two washers so that's what I'm looking for is to is to have two and you can see one kind of flopping around on the top here so there's the bolt and one washer with it and then underneath the second washer so you know you, you need to take a picture of it or make a note one washer goes right under the bolt and one washer goes be between the mechanism and the uh, mounting hole so we see how we can I think on the 457 I, I kept trying to get this out and I couldn't and that's when I learned I had to take off that face plate so you can see how clean this is I, I don't think I, I really didn't need to you know take it out but I wanted to show you how in case you have to and I'm I'm still loving this little blue Bob and Winder tire and oh look at that even the even the little holder for it it's plastic this is aluminum this is plastic and it's just kind of riveted on there but look look how look how sup, sup, look supple that tire is like I said uh, I usually just replace these uh, you know they're only like a buck or so you can see it's a singer on there but this this one I'm gonna leave it's it's too cute <laughs> so we'll keep that there so I've got to bag up that I've got to bag up my uh, needle plate holder and those parts and uh, I've got to take off my other two bed cushions get those in the proper place um, on a few of these machines I have started uh, had to take out the presser foot bar uh, and the needle bar because they were just so I had one uh, needle bar that was so frozen I, I couldn't get it to move up and down and I had to take the screws off and, and just tap it with that rubber mallet and break it free these these are varnished and dirty but I don't think I'm gonna have to take them out but look to to remove this as it would show you in in the guide is that you loosen this set screw that holds the needle bar and you just completely unscrew this you can see it's coming up and you take off the spring and the push rod the rod that's in there just goes down into the uh, top top of this uh, bar about that far there's like a little cup so you would take that off take the spring and the push rod lift it right out um, and then freeing that set screw is what removes this bar and in the uh, repair guide or service guide it tells you how to do this how to put it back in and how to adjust it for height and align it with the feed dogs the needle bar is also very easy it's this set screw so you would loosen that and you would slide the needle bar right up and when you put it back uh, it, the, guy, the service guide tells you how to do that some of you may be aware that there's a couple of uh, horizontal lines on the bar they are the timing marks and uh, the 
the top one you use more for the height of the needle bar and the bottom one is more to uh, set when you set the bob the hook timing and it tells you it tells you how to do that so you could clean this you could loosen that pull it out uh, clean it polish it I'm going to see how it cleans up and if it's not good enough then we'll we'll take them out and polish them this needle bar mechanism bracket and stuff over here is a lot more complicated I've usually never had any problem with those but a couple times I I have had to take them out um, and you know the the service guide tells you how to do it but you just gotta really watch it close because there's a lot of little tiny screws and springs and nuts and bolts and uh, it's it's got to be just right when you put it back to be able to center the needle so I avoid that and and like I said uh, you know I don't know out of a hundred plus machines I think twice I had to do it and I did it and you know okay it's done but it was like whew, uh, that was uh, that was kind of an ordeal um, it'll also tell you and you take this stuff off if you need to take off the uptake lever mechanism I've had to do that a couple times usually when the machine was dropped and this was broken or bent or damaged so bad I, I couldn't redo it and there's a screw and a retention reusable retention clip and so forth uh, you, you can even uh, get farther in there I mean you can you can take all the shafts and levers and, and everything off of these machines if you're up to it but I have I have good access in here to these uh, dirty see all the gunky dirty so I have this vertical gear it meshes with a horizontal gear that is at the end of the shaft that you see see that shinier round steel shaft there that's what uh, that gear is attached to and it goes down to run the lower so from the motor by belt to the hand wheel which is attached to the shaft that starts everything moving and uh, you see the end of that bottom of that shaft down here is this right here with this big uh, counterweight and that's 